Okay, so uh, let's talk about how to graph nonlinear functions. Again, we did this before earlier this week when we were talking about our graphing. So just to repeat, uh, again, the goal is to find the range of a graph. And uh, to graph a nonlinear function, what we use is point plotting. And the idea is we get a feel for what shape I expect. I throw in enough x values until I see the shape. And so for the first one, uh, we have a degree two polynomial. So I'm expecting a U shape up or a U shape down. So I'm gonna keep plotting points until I see that U shape. Uh, like back in the day, what we saw, what we usually want to do is try a negative, try zero, and try two. And then just to give you some inside information, the reason why I chose two is because we're dividing by a half. So I'm going to try to keep this uh, x squared nice and even, so one half of an even number is nice. So just some, some tricks of the game. So if we try to find f of negative 2, I'm going to plug the negative 2 in. Oops, that's a minus 5. And do the math. So this becomes half of 4. That's a negative 4 minus 5. Half of 4 we know to be um, 2. And that's going to be a negative 9 which gives us negative 7. So we just created a data point. Negative 2, negative 7 is on my graph. What about f of 0? When I plug 0 in there, all this is 0 and we end up with negative 5. So negative 5 is on my graph. And when we try plugging in a 2, right, um, what we get is 1 half 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 5. So this is 1 half times 4. That's another 4. This is 2 plus 4 minus 5. I'm getting 1 out of that, right? 6 minus 5. So right now what we have are three data points. So again, remember, we're trying to see if we get a, a U shape. Let's go to our grid and see if we see that. So here's my grid. And I can plot the point negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can plot the point 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then we have 2 and 1. So when I look at that, I can kind of see a little bit of a U shape right here. So what that kind of tells me is we're not done graphing. And if we're going to be plugging anything into this, we'll probably want to plug things in over on this side, not on that side. Because I can already start seeing the U shape over here. So we need to know how far is it coming down and what's happening over here. So we're going to go back to our, uh, our grid here. And how about we had negative 2. Why don't we throw a negative 4 in there and see what that gives us. So what's f of negative 4? I'll plug it into the uh, function and do some work. Now this is half of 16. This will be a negative 8 and a minus 5. Half of 16 is 8 plus negative 8, and then minus 5. And it looks like we get negative 5. So let's go see if that helps us out. So another data point that I have, I'm going to go to back to my grid. And we now have the data point negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And now I can see I've got it. It looks like that point right there is our bottoming out point. And so my U shape, if you wanted to plot more points, you could. But I think once you see that U shape, we pretty much have established what the graph looks like. So there is basically our graph of f of x equals 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 5. Now again, we can see the domains everything. We saw that earlier. So this is going to go on forever. So the x-axis is going to be covered in its entirety. But the range is not going to be everything because we do bottom out. So if I look at what's covered, it seems to start at negative 7 and goes all the way to positive infinity. So my range from that picture would be everything starting at negative 7 all the way to positive infinity. And so we are basically reviewed how to graph a nonlinear function and then use that graph to find our range. So hopefully that's a good review. What about the next function we're dealing with, the absolute value function? Well again, we establish the fact that the shape I'm expecting is a V-shape. So we're going to keep plotting until I see that V-shape take shape. So again, let's try a couple of negatives. How about we go 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. So when I plug negative 1 in here, 
we get the absolute value negative 4 which is 4 when I put a 0 in here we get um, 0 minus 3 it looks like we get 3 and then when I plug a 1 in there it looks like we get 2 alright so let's go graph that and see what we got so when I graph this guy the data point I have is negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I've got 0, 3, and then I've got 1 and 2. So clearly we don't see that V shape yet, and it's kind of hard. Are we this way or are we that way, right? So maybe, how about we just keep plotting? Let's stay positive right now. Let's plot a few more points. So let's go, uh, let's go to 3. If I put a 3 in there, and how about we go 5? So g of 3 would give us 3 minus 3, which is the absolute value of 0, which is 0. And then if I go 5, g of 5 is 5 minus 3, which is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. So let's see if that data point gives us what we need. So I'm going to go to my grid. I'm going to plot the point 1, 2, 3, 0. So again, I still don't see the v, but when I plot the 5, 2, right, that point right there, 3, 5, and 2, lo and behold, I start seeing that V-shape. So it looks like it's going to be a V-shape going this way, and it looks like we're going to have a V-shape going that way. And so again, we kind of, from the graph, we can reestablish the fact that the domain is everything. So the whole x-axis will be covered because we we'll go on for infinity, but the range is very different. Um, at its lowest, the range is 0, and it keeps on going to infinity. So the range of this function would be 0 to infinity. So again, review on how to graph a nonlinear function by point plotting and then using that graph to find our range. So we're good to go. One more. Uh, the cubic function, x cubed plus 1. So again, let's try a couple negatives. So how about we do negative 1, 0, and 1. How about we just even do a, a, a more. Let's anticipate we're going to have to graph more. So try a couple negatives, 0, 1, and 2. So if I put in a negative 2, we get negative 8 plus 1, that's a negative 7. If I plug in a negative 1, we get a negative 1 plus 1, we get a 0. If I plug in a 0, we get a 1. If I plug in a 1, I get 2. And if I plug in a 2, it looks like I get 9. So we've got at least five data points. So let's see what we have. And by the way, right, what we're expecting is a little S shape. So when I go graph this, right, taking the use of my data, we got negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We got negative 1 and 0. We got 0 and 1. We have 1 and 2. And then we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, way up there. So when I connect this data point, I think we got it because it's, it's not a pronounced S, but I do see that S. And just getting a feel from plugging in, if I plug in bigger values of negatives, we're just going to keep going down. And if I keep plugging bigger values of positives, we're just going to keep going up. So there's a rough sketch of X cubed plus 1. Again, all X's are covered. We, can, can, you know, we even got that feeling as we input it. You can put anything you want in here. But the range, it looks like it's going all the way to positive infinity and all the way down to negative infinity. So this is a really strong function. You can put anything you want in it, and you're going to get anything out of it. So again, review, hopefully that went well, of graphing nonlinear functions by point plotting and then using that graph to help us find the range. So that wraps up 7.3. Uh, again, if you guys have questions, email me, uh, ask for a Google Meet time. And uh, we'll be moving all the way to chapter 10. So I'll see you guys in those next future videos.